Time now for today's focused report. The autonomous region of Catalonia declared independence last October, but six months on, it's still being gathered by Spain's central government. While several of Catalonia's separatist leaders are either in prison or self-imposed exile abroad, the loved ones, though, say they're not willing to give up the fight for justice. Our correspondents on the ground sent us this report. Every week for the last six months, Che Bonnet has travelled 600 kilometres from Barcelona to this Madrid prison. You can make out the lookout point of the prison. And my partner is in that place right up there. Her partner, Jordi Couchat, is in jail here, under investigation over his role in his region's independence bid. As a leader, he never called for violence. Everything is possible now. He could be in prison for a long time, or things could be solved very quickly. Like nine others, Couchat is in custody in Madrid. He faces up to 25 years in jail if convicted for charges of rebellion. Since the October referendum, Spain's courts have begun criminal cases against separatist leaders like Carlos Mundo, Catalonia's sacked justice minister. Briefly held in custody and then bailed, he's kept a low profile since. Now he talks about his 33 days in jail. You're honest, hard-working people, committed to our country and very brave. Make this nightmare come to an end quickly. I remember the feeling of powerlessness and injustice that I felt in jail. I felt like a hunting trophy. He says he's now given up politics, but that hasn't stopped demonstrators in Barcelona treating him as a hero. Locking independence leaders away where they can't do any damage could win the government time, but it in no way ends the movement nor the support of the people for this great idea. The tense atmosphere in Catalonia isn't over. In central Barcelona, separatists are still fundraising. They sell badges, flags, T-shirts, anything to fund the cause. The Spanish government can carry on locking up our politicians, forcing them into exile to avoid prison, but people are still standing. Ten years ago, 400,000 people wanted independence, and today we're more than 2.5 million. Catalonia is still a divided place. Thousands of fed-up Catalans for and against independence frequently take to the streets. Radical separatists have started calling supporters out to make the declared Catalan Republic a reality. They've blocked motorways in Catalonia. They call themselves Committees for the Defense of the Republic. Spanish prosecutors are trying to charge them with terrorist-related offenses. The demonstrators hide their faces and their leaders' names to avoid legal repercussions. We don't ask very many questions. We know each other's first names, but not the surnames, not what they do for a living. Given a state of repression at the moment, it's safer this way. What unites us is the idea of a republic, our criticism of Spanish institutions. We need to say it. It's not against Spaniards, not at all. It's not our fellow citizens who cause problems. It's the institutions. Each week, men and women from different independence parties meet to decide the next campaigns. We are well aware that there are things we're doing that could get us fines or court cases. Barricades have never won battles, but they do help people resist. Is this war then? <laughs> no, it's a metaphor, just an image. This is about resistance. These separatists say they're entirely peaceful, despite accusations they're using violent or aggressive methods. Some fear the new demonstrations could escalate six months after the Catalan parliament declared an independent republic. 
Stay with us. We'll have uh, more world headlines for you coming up here on France 24.